I want to review the division of the nervous system and then provide some more detail on the autonomic nervous system at this point. So here is our brain and spinal cord, of course. And first, I want to start with sensory information coming in from the environment. This, oh, I did it. This could be the external environment. So it might affect skeletal muscles, for example, or skin. This would be our somatic sensory division. We'll talk more about somatic senses. So this could be here a skeletal muscle that is receiving information, for example, on muscle stretch. Then we've also got information coming in from the visceral organs. So this could be, for example, the heart, the intestines would be another example that sensory neurons transmit information from those regions to the spinal cord, unipolar sensory neurons. This information is afferent. On this side, we're going to have efferent or motor information. And we've talked in detail about the somatic motor division of the nervous system. I could draw the cell body for this multipolar somatic motor neuron anywhere along the spinal cord, depending on what muscles it's controlling. Right down here, right kind of in the middle, Maybe this is my ribs um, or abdomen muscles. Um, here is my lovely, it's more like a liver, skeletal muscle. This somatic motor neuron, part of the somatic motor division it, along with all the muscle fibers that it innervates, is a motor unit. You have multiple motor, unit, motor neurons projecting out. Now we're going to talk about the autonomic nervous system. Now, when I say auto autonomic, I typically mean the motor division. So there is, I'm sorry, I never labeled this one. Let's label over here. This over here is our visceral sensory. This is also called autonomic sensory, um, but typically you'll see it called visceral and that kind of helps to differentiate it from what we refer to when we say ANS is the autonomic nervous system. There technically is a sensory division to this, right? And we will talk about a reflex at the end that receives input from the visceral organs to then have a response via the autonomic nervous system. But typically we will focus on the motor. So I'm gonna draw the location of one of these cell bodies in the spinal cord. Um, the Sympathetic nervous system is what I'm drawing right now. This is located throughout the um, thoracic and lumbar regions. And actually, I'm going to do this. What? What did I just do? I drew a synapse. So this is our sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. There is something going on here. What is that group of cell bodies here going to be called? This is going to be called a ganglion. Specifically, it's an autonomic ganglion because it's in the autonomic nervous system. It's still a collection of cell bodies, but these are motor neurons that are part of the autonomic nervous system instead of unipolar sensory neurons. What ganglion is over here? The dorsal root ganglion. 
So the sympathetic nervous system, of course, is going to innervate glands, smooth muscle, heart is the easiest to draw. So I'm gonna draw one of those here. Um, okay, gonna leave it at that for now, actually. Then we've also got our parasympathetic division. There are cell bodies for the parasympathetic nervous system up in the cranium, so in the brain. As well as in the um, sacral region, the sacrum. And why did I draw this neuron so long? Because it is. So the preganglionic neuron, that's what this thing is. There's a pre and post ganglionic neuron. The pre ganglionic neuron for the parasympathetic nervous system is very long. It is very close to the target or effector that it is innervating. So here's another ganglion, here's another ganglion. And for both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous systems, so both the autonomic nervous systems, we call, we are gonna talk about this neuron as a pre-ganglionic neuron. And then we've got a post ganglionic neuron. This would be what? The post ganglionic neuron of the sympathetic nervous system. So there's differences in the lengths here, right? For the sympathetic nervous system, that autonomic ganglia is very close to the spinal cord and the pre -ganglionic ganglionic neuron is short, the post ganglionic neuron is long. For the parasympathetic nervous system, that pre ganglionic neuron is very long, the ganglia is very close to the target organ, and then that post ganglionic neuron is short. We will talk about what neurotransmitters are released from all of these, and we'll go over it again then. One more thing I want to add is that typically, so Typically, these somatic motor neurons are, are myelinated, right? Um, so I'm adding myelin with these nodes of Ranvier in between. Our preganglionic neurons of the autonomic nervous system are also myelinated. And the postganglionic neurons are not. While I'm drawing this in, so for, for here, it would look just like this. And that's it, that's easy. One more term. So this pre and post ganglionic neuron, how many neurons is that? Two. There's two neurons to get from the CNS out to the target organ. So that's called a two neuron chain. That is unlike the somatic motor division, where there is one neuron going from central nervous system to the target organ. So the two neuron chain refers to two neurons in the peripheral nervous system occurring.